morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm going to start out today's show with Maxine Macover. Now, she is the owner of Knit and Nest, which is located on Whitehead Street in Key West. For Maxine, knitting is much more than just a hobby. She actually turned to her knitting needles when her life was flipped upside down. According to Maxine, knitting saved her life. She has the full story for us this morning. Maxine, it's a pleasure having you here with me. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Now, Maxine, knitting is so much more than just a hobby for you, and you turned to it, as I mentioned, when your life was flipped upside down. What happened? Um, in 2004, my husband was diagnosed with acute melogenous leukemia. Uh, and as a result of that, um, he passed away in 2005. And we were in hospital for 15 months. Um, anybody that's ever been through that experience knows that your world gets very small, and my world got very small. And uh, I had a very, very hard time concentrating on anything. I couldn't read, or I didn't even look at newspapers. Uh, my sole concern was being with my husband, and you know, every day was another day. But I still needed something for me, so. Um, I turned to knitting. I had knitted before when I was younger, and I turned to it again, and it was uh, a great thing to put into my life at that time. Uh, the thing about knitting is it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. It is uh, your project. Um, it is, and I tell everybody, that this, it's portable art. So I could carry it with me no matter what situation we were in in the hospital. Uh, and of course, I was able to create some beautiful things for family and friends who came to visit us. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, w it was your escape. It was from my life. escape. Well, it was right. Mm -hmm. It was my escape from um, the reality that I was living in at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, were you living in Key West during this time? No. Th um, well, when my husband was diagnosed, we were in Key West, but we went to Atlanta, which is uh, our hometown. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, we went to MD Anderson and. Houston, Texas. So okay. um, we were out there for six months and then back in Atlanta for nine months. Okay. Well, then how did you make the move to, the, to Key West? Well, um, as I said, we were here when he was, uh, when we became ill and we had a home here mm -hmm. and a home in Atlanta. And um, after he passed away, I, well, I didn't know what I was going to do, mm -hmm. but Atlanta became uh, I wasn't comfortable there anymore. So anyway, I came down here and I thought this would be a great place to heal and um, a safe place as a single woman. And um, once I made that decision to, to move here, uh, then I had to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, there's just so many lunches and shopping <laughs> trips you can go on. And when I realized there wasn't a knit store here or a yarn store here, um, I decided to open one. So th this is your gift to the community then? It is my gift to the community. <laughs> now, do you have other people who come into the store, Maxine, and they have similar stories to yours and they've turned to knitting also? You have no idea how many people <laughs> have done exactly that. As a matter of fact, the piece that I have on was knitted by a man that I taught to knit three years ago. He came into my shop after a series of strokes and, um, as he said, was looking to put color back in his life. Uh, he thought he was going to a bead shop. Mm -hmm. He did not know how to knit. Mm -hmm. I convinced him to let me teach him how to knit. And um, he, I believe, is a real artist uh, when it comes to knitting. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are several different kinds of knitters. Some knitters follow a pattern exactly, and they're very good technicians. Uh, and that's the case with the man that works for me, Curtis Noon. He is a fabulous knitter and uh, a great technician. Charles, on the other hand, doesn't follow a pattern. <laughs> he just starts knitting and sort of lets the yarn speak to him. Mm -hmm. So um, that's his way of, of dealing with the fibers. Wow. Well, now the one that you have on right now is gorgeous. And then you. you also have this one. This well, morning I, I, as well, I wanted to show this. First of all, it's, um, there's such a diversity of fibers here, and that's what's going on in knitting right now. It's, it's not your grandmother's yarn anymore. It's very, very different. This is a throw um, that I knitted, and uh, it's, it's part of a kit that comes from Wales, which I sell in my shop. But I just wanted to uh, let you and your viewers know that not only can you knit garments to wear, but 
you can knit uh, pieces for your home as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I love it. It's gorgeous. And now Thank is you. your store open every day? We are open Monday through Saturday, mm -hmm. Monday from 10 to 5, and Tuesday through Saturday, uh, 9 to 5. Great. So we're closed on Sundays. And again, I just think it's so special, Maxine, that you know you were able to turn to this this helped you get through your trial and knitting is also helping so many other people and they can come to your store and just like we said escape exactly well we do have a knit group on Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. uh, from 1 to 4 and um, we have people that are here just for a week uh, or people that live here so it's a very diverse group and all different levels of knitters and it's um, it's a it's um, it's just a nice group mm -hmm. and a nice meeting time. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on this morning. And for more information on the store, just check out the information you see on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.